This is Longyearbyen. In this tiny village in the Arctic, located in the archipelago of Svalbard, in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, nobody can be born. and welcome back to a new video. If you haven't been here before, my name is Cecilia and I live on Svalbard, which is an island close to the North Pole. So we're on a teeny tiny island in the Arctic and we have polar bears here. But if you know me and you've been here before, hi and welcome back. And welcome to kind of a new video type on my channel. So I realized that there's a lot of kind of strange things about Svalbard that people don't know about. So I want to make this series, which is kind of like random Svalbard facts in shorter videos that I'll just put up here and there. You might have heard it's forbidden to die on Svalbard. Well, that's not true, but I can talk about that in another one. You can't give birth here. You know, our alcohol is rationed. So we actually have these little cards where it says how much alcohol you can buy a month. We carry polar bear protection, so we carry guns every time we go outside of the village for polar bears. There's just a lot of things that are different about our lives. <laughs> so I'm gonna make shorter videos on these topics because they are frequently asked questions and I think it would be really cool to delve into some of the history behind it and why it is like it is and things that are just unusual about Svalbard and definitely a lot different to other places. So today we're gonna to talk about the fact that you cannot give birth on Svalbard. What happens if you're pregnant? Where do you go? Do you have to go home to your own country? And how it all works, because it's pretty special up here and to not be able to go and give birth at a hospital that's the closest to you and you have to fly somewhere is probably not usual. So let me tell you all about it now. This is just a quick commercial break. I wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by NordVPN. And you know that I've been working with NordVPN for quite a while now, and I'm so happy with their service. Also, thank you so much for watching. It is thanks to all of you guys and sponsors like NordVPN that I can continue making all of these videos. So I'm just very happy for that. As you know, I'm Swedish, so I live in Norway, which means that I can't access like my shows back home or you know all of these Swedish sites with entertainment so if I just log on to NordVPN and I switch and I say that I'm in Sweden my computer thinks I'm in Sweden and that's how a VPN works so then I can access all of my shows and everything that I want to watch from Sweden which is great go to nordvpn.com slash Cecilia or use the code Cecilia to get a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount it's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. And thank you again to NordVPN. I love you guys. And um, let's head back to the rest of the video. Okay, so back to what I was saying in the beginning. This is Longyearbyen, the main village on Spitsbergen, an island in the Svalbard archipelago. The village has a population of 2,400 people, me being one of those, and the island is governed by Norway. So what makes this place unusual? Well, first of all, we have polar bears, the fact that us locals have to carry guns as polar bear protection when outside the village limits. Then we have the seasons, four months of midnight sun, four months of polar night in complete darkness, glaciers everywhere. Yeah, so a couple of pretty unusual things. But apart from all that, this village is not like a regular town on the mainland. Being so remote and extreme, some things are just not ideal to do here, like giving birth to a child. Does that mean that it is forbidden to give birth on Svalbard? No, of course not. It actually happens once every year or so. It's just not something the hospital has the facilities to handle if something were to go wrong. So all pregnant mothers have to leave the island to go to the mainland one month before their due date. During the first 100 years, there have been a total of four hospital buildings in Longyearbyen. The first hospital was built in a part of the village called Skjæringa in 1916. This was, however, ruined in the Second World War, so the next hospital was built on Haugen, which unfortunately was ruined by an avalanche in 1953, which killed two people. Then in 1954, a new hospital building was ready for use. But, however, problems related to the permafrost were quickly revealed and the building quickly cracked. So there has been a lot of problems with the hospital buildings in town. But in 1991, the current hospital building was completed. 
Our current hospital provides both primary and specialist health services to the population of Svalbard. During the day, there are outpatient activities where you can be examined, treated and investigated for diseases and small surgical procedures can be performed. There are physiotherapists, nurses, midwives, dentists and occupational health services at the hospital. Opticians are present only twice a year and usually announce when they will be visiting our town on the town Facebook page. But back to giving birth. Pregnant mothers are sent to the mainland one month before their due date, and home births are strongly advised against. When you work and pay taxes on Svalbard, you get universal healthcare coverage, just like you would in Norway, which means that you don't pay anything for procedures. Perhaps only a small sum, like the 50 kroners I paid for blood work the other day. So the universal healthcare covers the cost of childbirth, including accommodation on the mainland for anyone traveling from Svalbard, which I think is terrific. It's also quite common for foreigners to go back to their home countries to give birth there, instead of doing so in Norway. Now, does the baby become Norwegian if born in Norway? No, there is no birthright citizenship here. The child takes the nationality of one of the parents, and the parents have to apply for a resident permit for their newborn. Only if at least one of the parents are from Norway can the child take a Norwegian citizenship. But as we all know, children have a mind of their own and sometimes decide to enter the world a little earlier than expected. Due to this, a couple of children have been born here throughout the years. In 2006, the first child in 10 years was born at the Longyearbyen Hospital. Then in 2009, the first twin babies were born on Svalbard. The children were delivered by cesarean section at the hospital in town and were flown down the same evening in the hospital's incubator, which is not intended to be used on an aircraft. The parents, however, had to wait for the next scheduled flight two days later. The hospital the Svalbard patients are sent to is the closest one to us, which is the one in Tromsø in northern Norway. It has 24-hour surgical preparedness and the distance is 1,200 kilometers as the crow flies. And the transport time is at best 7 to 8 hours from the ambulance flight is booked until the patient arrives at the hospital. So now you know, if you are a pregnant woman and you're having a baby up here, you're gonna have to go to the mainland. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and let me know if you want me to continue on with these kind of videos. I think I'll make a few and see what you guys think about them. I think it could be a fun way to get across more information about Svalbard, especially if you're maybe planning to move here or if you just want to know more about what life is like on, you know, in the northernmost town in the world. So let me know in the comments and if you want to like this video and subscribe, I would love that. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.